Alex Bowman ninth, uh, and Josh Berry running out the 10. Very good. And uh, now we travel overseas to China for the Formula E series. Yeah. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. They only used half the track, actually. That was really cool, though. I quite like that. Not the full Shanghai track. Well, they have to because otherwise, you know, like, I mean, they just don't have the top speed. Yes, like we said, the uh, Formula E was racing around the Shanghai track like the Grand Prix did at F1 a couple of weeks ago. However, they only used half the track, like we just said. Um, bit of an odd layout. They kind of used like a look, look like a car park entrance just to the paddock, to be honest. But literally, um, the chicane was cool. I did I admire like that. It's quite te- tight and technical, though. Oh, definitely. Yeah, yeah like. Some, they still somehow, well, I don't know how, but they fit two cars through there. They're smaller, though. Oh, yeah. They are a lot smaller than the F1 Definitely. cars. But um, that chicane, like, the track is so wide built for Grand Prix cars, and then they go off track into the chicane to the main straight. It's, yeah, the weird layout, but it kind of worked, and there was a, pretty much a battle. The whole race 11 of the championship race uh, was pretty much side by side the entire way. It was pretty cool. Yeah. It, it is cool. I think what's really interesting about Formula E at the moment and this is just coming from someone who races cars, is that mm. they, they don't look like race cars. They look like toys. And yeah, they, they, they are mean, small. They are small. They don't look like a race car. Like for a fan, you know, to get behind them, you know, make them aggressive, make them look like race cars. And mm. this whole electric, you know, we're trying to... They don't sound like race cars either. But, but you know, they, they, their whole thing is, you know, we're trying to become, uh, we're trying to appeal to people that are not... Uh, into racing, but but they want to become, but they are into electric. No, just make them appealing for race car drivers and race racing fans. Yeah, well, like we said, similar with the IndyCar, how X F1 drivers or upcoming F1 drivers are now switching to IndyCar. It's the oh, same for uh, Formula E. Half this field is former F1 drivers. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah, we'll go through the the results of the uh, race eleven of the championship. Uh, Mitch Evans from New Zealand won that one with Pascal Verlein, as we mentioned, as a Formula F1 driver in second. Uh, Nick Cassidy third. That oh. was a great last lap battle. Oh my oh, god! Oh, that was fantastic. Yeah, they awesome. swapped places. Nick wasn't too happy, I think, in that race as well um, no. with his team. Um, there was a reason for that because he had a lot more energy than mm. the other two. Oh, so he had like three or four percent extra and could have gone guns blazing. The, they, the other two were holding him up. Yeah, because he was asking like, "Can I push? Can I push?" And they were like, "No, no." Yeah, because they didn't want to avoid a crash. And then he ended up crossing the line without a front wing. Yeah, because he, uh, he hit um, <laughs> in the back of the uh, wear line. Yeah. yeah. So, crazy. Um, Oliver Rowland, fourth. Jake Dennis, fifth. John Eric Verne, XF1 driver. And actually, the next, sorry, the next like five <laughs> so are XF1 yeah. drivers. John Eric Verne, sixth. Nick DeFree, seventh. Sebastian Buemi, I'm pretty sure started like last, or at least in the second race he did. Uh, Stoffel Van Dorn, um, ninth, and then Lucas Di Grassi in tenth. Yeah, look, I mean, overall, I think if people actually took the time to watch a Formula E race, I think that they would be interested. You know, like mm. in, 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 you know, in the, the racing and how close it is and how many overtakes are happening. I, again, I just think that the category itself needs to do more to make it appealing to racing fans. Well, I actually think though that they did at the beginning because. Up until I think this year or a couple of years ago, they only they only raced on street circuits. Yes, mm. only that was cool. Yeah, that's something F one doesn't do. But now that they're using tracks such as Shanghai. It's a bit, yeah, it's gone downhill for me. I don't know. Like the cars are cooler, newer, but they like you said do look like toys. But I think the the tracks that they're racing at is a big determinant factor because it's not as exciting when you have walls next to you determining a mistake or not yeah. and yeah. i think to promote a fan's perspective you need that absolutely mm. and i think with the street racing um because the whole city has to stop to put the walls in mm-hmm. to, everybody gets to find out find out about it as well mm-hmm. okay. so like the rome race was like epic you know like mm. had so many fans so many people watching why because well i can't go anywhere because yeah. my, my, yeah. whole, my whole city's <laughs> blocked right in the middle of the city so i might as well watch it you know so they got to do something, and I think also from um, you know social media numbers as well. You know, it is quite poor. Great branding. I mean, you know, it looks fantastic. You know, the FIA, you know, Formula E, and it is appealing to drivers. I just think they just need to do more to make it more racy. Well, I don't even know that the London track, if they haven't changed it, literally goes through like a convention center. Yeah, that's yeah. half indoors, half outdoors. That's really cool. that's cool. That that's cool. Really cool. That's, that's cool. cool. Um, and. 
The thing is, well, Formula E, they've come a long way since I think 2015 is when they started. Yes. And it, what as you as I'm looking here, it's uh, great to see so many manufacturers and stuff um, become yeah. part of it, like Andretti, uh, Penske, McLaren, Porsche, Jaguar, um, just to name a and Nissan as well. Um, it's fantastic to see because um, obviously you know there's a market for electric cars these days, and uh, this is a in a way, I know they look different compared to the road cars, but yeah. in terms of electric power, it you know pretty similar. Yeah, very. Yeah. Um. Well, we'll go through the results of the round twelve or race twelve of the year. Um. Pretty much, not many names are in the same top ten, so it's very different results. They have, <laughs> sorry, unlike F one, they have very different results. Uh, yeah. Week to week, race to race. So it's like a whole another week of racing. Right? Yeah. Hundred <laughs> percent. At that, Antonio Felix da Costa uh, win the race for Porsche. Jake Hughes for McLaren. It's the only F one, F E, Formula E, you know, same team. McLaren is the only one that represents both brands. Yes. Well, they um, represent Indy as well. Yeah, well, they do everything, and even that that off road extreme E. Extreme E. I know yeah. that's cool. If McLaren's got a very very McLaren's good yeah very busy. Uh, Norman Nato, who I'd never actually heard of to be honest. Um, was third for Andretti, so there you go, another manufacturer. Um, Nick Cassidy, fourth, so he had a pretty consistent weekend. Yes. Mitch Evans, fifth. Stoffel Van Dorn, sixth, so I'm pretty sure was leading the race. Uh, John Eric Verne was seventh. Uh, Max Gunther for Maserati, another manufacturer yeah. there. Yes. Um, Robin Frines and Oliver Rowland rounding out the 10. Yeah, brilliant. Now, Franz did well. He actually, uh, I think, I think I'm pretty sure it's race 12. He actually got spun out, um, I believe. So good recovery from him overall, if that is the case, unless I'm getting my races mixed up. He started but, 20th, so. So he did rather well. Yeah, 100%. But overall, what an epic weekend of racing. Like, oh. there's just across the globe, from Shanghai to, you know, America, to Monaco, to to Spain, it, it was just a, an unbelievable weekend of motorsport. And, Motorsport has never been more popular. It's a fantastic, you know, what Drive to Survive has done. You know, yeah. it is so good. <laughs> yeah, it's so good. Taken over. Oh, for sure. And it's interesting actually in saying that as well because MotoGP is now going to be owned by Liberty Media. So that'll be interesting to see uh, if we get anything similar to that as well. Yeah. 